Welcome everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist and we are going live today to teach you how to paint this really beautiful sugar skull cowboy boot or cowgirl boot. Um, I provided the link to the painting kit that goes with this. We provide all the supplies that you need. Uh, before we get too far into it with the painting part, I'm going to go ahead and talk about all of the Actually, let me move this over a little bit. Move the mic closer. All right. Um, so we're going to talk about the tracing part. So this is the traceable line art. You can see that there is a lot of detail here. And so that's why this is so incredibly helpful. And this is what comes with the kit. And then it also comes with some awesome graphite paper. Helpful hint here is that you want to make sure and place the dull gray side facing up and then the shiny black side faces your canvas. Um, in the beginning, of course, your canvas will be blank. Um, for team building corporate uh, classes, we do offer these already pre-aligned, so contact us about that at tipsyartist.com if you are interested in that. That can be a huge time saver for your group. So we do that with, there's an extra fee for that, but um, other than that, if you don't mind doing all of this work, um, you get to learn something new and experience what it feels like to draw all this out for yourself. And this is what actually comes with the kit. So um, what I do here is I make sure your kit has some tape in it. We tape just only at the top. We do a secure tape on the graphite paper first and then on the line art on top of that. And then uh, the reason why we do that is so that as you trace, because basically what you're going to do is take your pencil and just go ahead and do a line over every single place that you see a line, just like that. And then once you're done, of course, as you progress, you'll want to continue to be able to lift up and check your work. There's a lot of detail here, so you're going to have to check back and forth many times before you absolutely release this and let it go because once you untape this it's I'm going to say almost nearly impossible to line it back up where it was so if you miss something you're just going to have to freehand it in so again that's why it's super helpful just tape up here at the top do all of your tracing and then just really double check your work very thoroughly to make sure that you've got everything alright so then once that's done we can go ahead and just lift this off Go ahead and just fold that over here. All right, so we're all ready to go. Um, and then let me tell you a little bit about this too. So initially when you do your transfer, it will look more like a graphite line over the top, basically looking like pencil marks on there. Um, that will be this same exact shape. Your kit also comes with a permanent marker. So then I take that permanent marker and then I reinforce every single line just right over the top and then if it becomes really small um, then you can also just use a black ballpoint pen too to do the very tiny lines in there but that really helps a lot so that when you do your painting you never lose all that trace and it will just pop through the paint so that's a very um, helpful little hint as well and now we are ready to paint all right, so again, I want to say thank you to everybody that's out there joining us on Facebook today. And um, if you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below. It's a little hard for me to sometimes see the chat on Facebook, but I always get back with everybody right after the class. Um, and same thing with YouTube, um, as I post it later there as well. Just make sure and leave me any questions or comments. I always get back with everybody right afterwards. So thank you again, and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got my palette of paint here nearby. I did go ahead and do a little bit of a preload with basic colors that I use all the time, um, which would be my titanium white and my black. And just to give you a visual on the paint kit here, this is what it looks like. All right, so here we go. Um, this is also your brush set here prefer to my brush set is a little bit of a this is my family here so I've got my mama brush a little half inch tackle on brush and then we have little buddy a quarter inch tackle tackle on brush and then little bit 
All right, so I've got my napkins. Everything's all ready to go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and work on that background first. And it, in the model, um, it's basically kind of like a weathered wood look. So we're going to take a nice big dollop of your titanium white. If you are getting this out of your tube for the first time, then I would say, let me give you a visual on that real quick. There's my titanium white. Um, then I would say squirt out about a quarter size dollop of the titanium white. I'm going to go ahead and just start by grabbing a nice dollop over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the same brush. I don't even clean it off in between because we're going to be mixing these colors together. And I'm going to go ahead and just barely dip into that Mars black. We're going to mix that up. And this will give us a really nice light gray. And if you do want something a bit darker, you certainly can do that. Just continue to add a little bit more of that Mars black, and that will quickly darken that up. But you do want to be cautious with that because it can take it to a very dark color very quickly. So the black can be very overpowering. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let's move a few things over here, get a little bit more room. We're kind of using artists these days. We have to use our desk for, with our computer and our paint and everything. It's super fun. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and push into that light gray. And then we'll start by kind of sweeping this across nice horizontal strokes and if some of the darker parts of the black make little streaks across the background that's actually a desired effect it's really nice to see that because again we're wanting to recreate a look that is very much like old weathered wood and so we definitely have that kind of effect and it's old weathered painted wood it's like an old chipping um, white grayish paint it's like on the side of the barn that's basically what we're trying to go for here so just kind of keep pushing that back and forth you can also push into a little bit of this pure white paint kind of create some streaks of that all the way through and keep a nice continuous firm hand all the way across And I don't want to interrupt that stroke, so the good news about the trace is that it's going to stay in place. So I can actually just do a little bit of an overlap. And if your paint is a little bit too thick, you can always add a little bit of water to it here to kind of thin it out a little bit, make it a bit more transparent. So I'll do every bit of coverage on the side and then a slight bit of overlap there that way our barn wood is not interrupted because you don't want to stop short of the boot and then try to be doing your cut-in work and then see choppy brush strokes in there so this just makes it easier for you as a beginner So again, just nice horizontal strokes. I start on the very edge of the canvas and pull all the way in until it just slightly goes over the edge of where that boot is. And you can see how that permanent marker line is definitely showing through. Let's add a little touch of white in here too, a little streak of that coming through. A little bit more white. Pull it down the flat side of the brush. Kind of lightly drag that across. Make it a bit more pronounced in certain areas. Create a little bit of variety here in the background. get a little bit more of a mix here. So I'm going to do one more quarter size dollop of the titanium white. 
little tiny touch of the black. Let's mix that together. And just continue on with those horizontal strokes. And all the way across. Grab a little bit more water here. Another quarter size dollop of the titanium white, little tiny touch of the black. Do another mix. Now, no worries on all of this over paint, this over painting that we're doing. We're going to come back in and redefine all that later because it will pop out again. We'll be able to see it and we'll redefine those lines. In fact, some people who have painted with me a lot, they know too that they can actually do all of this background in the very beginning, let it completely set up and dry, and then do the line art over the top. That is also another option. All right, now I'm coming back in with a little bit more of that white detail over the top. You can also come in with some pure black too, just a little touch of that. Again, this is old wood here. Okay, good deal. All right, so we're going to go ahead and rinse out. To get that brush nice and clean again, I'm going to do a nice firm circling of the brush with some firm pressure. That will help release the paint. And then I'm going to go ahead and just wipe this off. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start into some of the bright colors. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with some primary magenta. Do a nice quarter size dollop of that. All right, now let's also use some cadmium red. Do a nice quarter size dollop of that. 
And if I ever go too fast for you, always please know you can just pause. Now, not during a live, of course. If it's the actual live. You can't do this. But once it's just left up online, recorded, you can always just pause it, get caught up, and then continue on. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use my little buddy brush now to mix these two together. This cadmium red and primary magenta will make a really nice, cool red color. All right, really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and push this into my little rose shapes here. We're going to start by just holding the brush just like you would hold a pencil and just we're working on that background color just to make sure we get a nice first layer on here and it's fairly translucent so we're still able to see a lot of that line work underneath Now you can go ahead and turn the handle of the brush more over to the flat side and that allows a thicker coat of paint to rest on top of the surface area and also gives you a better chance to kind of feather out those brush strokes. All right, really lovely. Just continue on here. Another big rose down here at the base. All right, now feather it out. Again, holding that brush a little bit more parallel to the canvas. Then we have this rose here has a little bit more of a pink tone to it, so we're going to add a little bit more of that primary magenta. Let's go ahead and scrape off the excess there and then push a little bit more into the primary magenta. Feather this out. Really pretty. All right, we're going to go ahead and rinse out. And then we're going to go ahead and start to work with our little bit brush. This is the smallest brush that we have. And we're going to go ahead and do a little twist here into that first color that we mixed up with the cadmium red and the primary magenta. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the head of the brush into the paint, twirl it into the paint. This will load up the brush, but it also twirls it into a nice fine point. And then moving forward, we're going to go ahead and fill into those smaller flower details. And this is a point too where if you need to have a little bit of setup and dry time, you can, or you can just do a little bit of a wipe on some things to remove the excess wipe before you start in with this. But you hold it a lot like you would hold a pencil and just kind of work into those little shapes. a little flower here you just kind of do a little touch and kind of dot the paint on
Alright, I'm doing a once over now just to kind of make sure I've got all the vibrant colors in place. And I believe we'll switch colors now. Do a little rinse out. We're going to switch over to more of a turquoise color. So I'm going to turn my palette just a little bit here. And let's go ahead and find our Viridian. Do about, again, about a nickel size amount dollop of that. And then let's take our primary cyan blue. About another nickel size dollop of that. Alright, and then we'll also be using our titanium white. And I have some already on my plate, so I'm going to go ahead and do a nice big dollop of the white. Let's do a little touch of that blue, and then a little pea-sized amount of the Viridian. Let's mix all that together. Start there. That is really pretty. Let's take a closer look. So again, that was about a um, big, generous pea-sized amount of the white size amount of the Viridian and then just try a little touch of the primary cyan blue and that will give you some turquoise we always rinse out our brushes very quickly after use acrylic paint will set up and dry very quickly on your brushes turn them into sticks instead of brushes so you want to be careful with that all right, now let's go ahead and switch back to our little bit brush and do a little twirl here into the turquoise paint. We're going to do a little twist. That will give us a nice fine point while also loading up the brush. Just kind of hold it like a pencil. When I have a fuller part of the petal, I'll pick up a little bit more of a ball of paint on the end. And then I'll go ahead and push this into that flower. Curl here. We have a few little turquoise leaves. It kind of feels like you make a parenthesis and then another parenthesis. You kind of turn your brush over to the flat side to kind of fill that in.
we're ready to move on to the next shade. We're going to rinse out. We'll dry here. Let's go ahead and start to use some of our cadmium orange. A little nickel sized dollop of that. And some cadmium yellow. Similar size there. We'll be using our little bit brush again. Nice and clean. And let's mix those two together. Beautiful, bright. Kind of an orange peachy color. So again, let's get a big ball of paint here, kind of push into that fullness of the petal. And then I'm turning it more over to the flat side of the brush to fill in. A nice thick coat that will just rest right on top. And again, just looking over once again, making sure I've got all the bright touches of cadmium orange and cadmium yellow that I like. Feeling pretty good about that. So I'm going to go ahead and just scrape off the excess. We can always come back to that later if we want to fill in a little bit more. Right, I'm going to do just a touch of pure cadmium yellow now. Little dollop, little pea sized dollop there. Let's take our clean little bit brush, just dip right into the top. And then let's just press right down on these tiny little flowers. Um, let me show you another technique you can do here too. You can actually use the handle of the brush. Dip right into that paint, and you can just barely touch down. This will leave tiny little dots as well. So this might give you a little bit more control to use the handle of the brush. Try both. See which one you're more comfortable with. doesn't quite get it with the handle the first time you can always just re-dot reapply and I am pressing all the way down on the canvas every time and then just lifting straight up
All right, beautiful. Let's go ahead and wipe that clean. We'll rinse out. Dry off. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work in some beautiful bright green. All right, well, we definitely want to use this bright yellow green. Let's do a little touch right there. Little bit brush. Let's go ahead and go right back into it. Pure bright yellow green. Very bright. Just filling into those leaf shapes. Here's my sweet puppy dog, Miss Ira. Again, to get a little bit more paint to just rest lightly on the surface. Watch my hand, I'm turning it over to the side. That gives me a more gentle hand. And then when you're dealing with whatever's left, then you can kind of figure it out where maybe you might have missed a few little spots of bright colors. You can always come back in, fill in a little bit. And we still have gray to work in as well. Alright, so we're going to come back in. Before I come back in with any more brights, I'm going to go ahead and work in the gray part. So still using here my little bit brush. I'm going to grab a dollop of the white, little touch of the black. We're going to make a nice medium gray. Do a little twist here. Get a nice fine point again. All right, let's go ahead and work into that little curl. Beautiful. And let's do another one here. See like that right there? That's a part of the rose that I missed earlier. So I'm going to wait and get that later with the red. Curl of gray there. Let's 
see anything else. This is a little touch of gray. There, and then here. Twirl all this back out again, nice fine point. Do a few more little curls here. Go ahead and rinse out. Now let's get some of the obvious color corrections here. So I've got my little bit brush again. I'm going back into the cadmium red and the mix of the primary magenta. And we're going to go ahead and hit that. There it's a little part of the rose there that we missed earlier. And this one is another one we missed earlier. Wonderful. And rinse out. I see a few little leaves peeking out. You probably do too. It's almost like a fun little game of I Spy at this point. Like, what did we miss? All right, little twirl into that bright green. There that is. There's, oh, there's some more. Oh, and there's one right there. Got it. Rinse out. Now let's go back into the primary magenta and do a few more little bright touches of that. Now this is a spot, you know, this is a little brown circle so you can just paint it on or if you want to dip into it with the handle of the brush, that technique, that's another option too. Rinse out, dry off. Let's go ahead and grab a little more of the orange. You can also hit some things with a second coat too if you feel like you still have a little bit of transparency. Come back over it.
we have our turquoise again, but I am out. So I'm going to do a little touch of Viridian, a little touch of the primary cyan blue, and a lot of white. Let's go ahead and work that back in. Twirl it out now. Nice fine point. And we're going to make a little shape here. It's like a little loop. You can fill that in or leave the white behind it. And another little twist here into the paint to get a nice fine point. And then we're going to pull this into what looks like a little bit of a teardrop. A little bit more of a firm pressure at the fullest part of the teardrop and then lift off of the light hand to taper up. All right. So I feel like we have all of our color in place, which is a wonderful thing. And this part of the skull here that is white, we're going to go ahead and let the painted uh, canvas, the, paint, the canvas is painted and primed white, so we're going to let the white of the canvas be our white. That makes the process a whole lot easier um, so that you don't have to try to worry about getting in and around that shape. That can be a little bit challenging. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start to work in our black. And if there's parts that I want to be not just pure black, but a little bit more of a shaded, I'm going to add just a tiny amount of white to do like a really dark charcoal color. I'm going to do that here on this part of the bootstrap. Add a little touch of white here to kind of do a nice little bit of shading there. All right, now let's go a little bit darker nearby. And we're going to work on that outline and then filling in. So this is definitely the part it takes a lot of patience and just working this in. And if you're ever a little bit too timid about the ability of your hand and maybe you're concerned that as you get too close in detail that you can't quite handle this. Um, don't forget about letting it completely set up and dry. Uh, using your permanent marker a little bit more to handle the very intricate details of getting super close to some of this design work and working back in with that. You know that tool is there for you to help you out as a beginner so definitely take advantage of it. Also, one other thing I want to tell you, we've got some long lines here, and I think sometimes it's easier to use our mama brush. Let's do a nice firm press. Make sure it's super nice and thin on the edge. And then you can take this for the long lines. Because if you try to do it all with a little bit, it can become a little bit shaky, and so it's actually easier to make a nice thin line with the Mama brush.
but not around the curve because it's that curves too tight and it'll make a big thick line that you don't want so just use it like along the straightaway here and check the end as you fill the brush make sure it doesn't get too fat with paint and spread out so give it some firm pressure on each side make sure it's nice and thin and take advantage of that long line of this brush for as much as you can with the long lines of the design. And then we'll go ahead and finish out this little heel here. Go ahead and leave that in the water for a little bit. All right. And now we can go ahead and go back to our detail work here. And feel free to kind of turn the canvas a little bit too. You can have better positioning, get closer to certain sections. And you can do little tiny touches in little areas like this too. Just kind of barely touch down into those spots. Making such good progress. It's really going to start to come together. Now keep in mind we still have highlight colors and patterns to do over the top and even a little bit of refining of our black around these major uh, design shapes here. But we're just working on getting all that background color in for right now. And if your brush gets too filled with paint, it can make the bristles kind of spread out and harder to control. So again, remember to do a little twirl into the paint. Twirl like that. Let's get into a nice white spot so you can see. And then that will make it go back out to a fine point.
this is the time when I'm going to go ahead and turn it just a little bit here. Make it a little bit easier to get to certain areas because you don't want your forearm here to rest anywhere into the wet paint. Now we have some detail work that we need to do because we just have a lot of flat color coming out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and twist into this black here. Okay, and we're going to do a few little curve lines here. This is like some stitching that comes in. A few curve lines there. going to reinforce this black line here on the rose and this is also something you can do with your permanent marker. I'm going to wait for it to completely set up and dry. That line should just poke back out again. Brings it back to the forefront there. All right, we're also going to be using this end of the brush here to go ahead and do that technique where we dot back into color. We have our morning sun coming in in the sunroom also. May have to get up and close the blinds. We will see. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and use this to dot into some color here. A 
going to use some of that bright orange or bright yellow. See, it makes some of those flowers really pop back out again. It's really pretty. Getting real close here. Going back in some of this cadmium yellow, just working in some of the places that I see they're still a bit translucent. Do a little highlight. Going back in a little bit more of our cadmium red. And then let's rinse out. Okay, I'm going to work back in a little bit more of my turquoise. So my viridian, primary cyan blue, and then the white. Let's twirl that out. Using the handle of the brush, dot a little bit.
and go back in with a little bit more of the green and then a little white to the green this time. I'm going to do some fun white dots that will kind of sprinkle throughout the design. So I'm using the smallest brush, a little bit, and the white paint. We're just going to push right into that titanium white. Sometimes I'll do it in the center of the flower too. So this is a really fun, easy way to add a lot more pattern. I'm going to mix up a little bit of a light gray here. And we're going to make a line. Just underneath that.
Just accentuating that bootstrap there as well. And of course you can always come back in and continually add a little bit more of some second coat if you want. Working my leaves just a little bit. I'm going to do a little tiny fine point of the black, twirl it out here, a nice fine point, and then we're just going to make some little center lines through those leaves. And this is something that you can also do with your Sharpie too. Just want to make sure that your paint is completely dry. And just a little bit more water to the paint, get it all thinned out. Doing a little slight curve with that little black line in the middle. And then a few little, just tiny touches of the white accent here again. With a little parentheses there, that little curve on the boot. And I'm gonna reinforce that black just right over the end here. All right. 
we could probably just keep going on this just about all day <laughs> but I'm gonna have to call it quits there's a lot of detail here we can continue to work in but this is a really great either start or finish just kind of depends on how you look at it but we've done a lot of work a lot of detail here all right so again this is our sugar skull cowboy boot really cute design a lot of detail so if you're feeling really ambitious and also if you need something that gives you a lot of time to just continue to work on something that keeps you um, relaxed and keeps your mind preoccupied this is definitely that type of project um, so again, we just want to thank you so much for joining us here today. And if you have any questions, leave them for me below, and I'll get back with you right after the class. And everything you need for this paint kit is on our website at tipsyartist.com. So I'll be seeing you very soon, but y'all have a beautiful rest of the day.